just fire away. Why don't you fire, fire, fire all nine and see if I can remember it. Well, um, well, let's just start with Russell Gage and having him back and Sparky provided last game. Uh, how would to have Russell back in the lineup for you? Well, with our players, you know, you're going through the NFL season, you're going to have some weeks where, you know, um, I had a really good coach one time tell me that it's only 100% in the NFL is you're going to be dealing with injuries. And so that's what happens in our teams. We got a you know, team with the right mindset, a resilient group, and guys are going to be in and out of the lineup all, you know, all year. And just like any of us, our players, we, we, if they're going to be active on game day, we have high expectations. And uh, the uh, missed, uh, missed tackles, I've got 39. I don't know if that's high or low, uh, 9%. Uh, where are y'all at with your missed tackles on defense? Well, I think like every team in the league, D-led, um, we're always working to improve fundamentally. You know, those are things that add up to, to extra uh, snaps offensively and ultimately lead to extra points. Uh, same thing when you miss blocks. You know, usually bad things happen. Quarterback may get rushed on a decision. But those are fundamentals we're co- continuously trying to improve on to help us and help us play better as a team. And then secondary-wise, can they get the more help? Um... With, with the, you know, I know it goes together, but would y'all like to see more pressure from the uh, up front group, uh, hits, um, sacks, and everything that entails? And I'm great, you had a big one to get your turnover there. Uh, last sure. Year, um, I, you know, I think it's been a pretty spirited debate uh, recently. You know, people that, you know, there's people that, that die on the hill that sacks is the only number. And, you know, some people buy into that narrative, and that's why guys get paid certain numbers. There's other defenders in this league that can really affect the quarterback by putting pressure internally on the pocket or making them step up or helping them get off a first read. Um, and there's some teams that are really good at design and they have coordinated rush, and there's a lot of ways to, to affect the passer. I know stats get a lot of the, a lot of the glory, and, you know, it depends on what side of the argument you subscribe to. But uh, we have guys, multiple guys that we feel that can affect the quarterbacks with different schemes. Different different rush plans, and uh, certainly you brought up Grady, and just because he doesn't have a high sack number, um, the guy really affects. He can affect the, the cue. So different ways to do it. We're always looking D led, find different ways to, to affect the quarterback. What, what is it about Calvin that they're not running that's unique? Well, I think I mean most of our players in this roster are unique. There's not one. I've never worked with a guy. That's why I don't get in comparisons. Uh, maybe it's just a personal thing. I certainly didn't want to be stereotyped, and I don't stereotype other people, and I don't so live in these notions of right on the surface fixed narratives that, oh, okay, this guy, well, he went to Alabama, he's probably going to be like this. Or he's from South Florida, he's probably going to be like this. Or whatever stupid narrative people put on people. But with a guy like Ridd, like a lot of our players, he's just unique. He, he's a good football player. He knows how to set people up at the top of their routes, and he's got his own unique style doing it. And everybody's body's a little bit different, too. Um, like I said, I mean, I mean, when you get into, you know, we don't, you know, I've been with players, as, you know, I've had coaches say, hey, they can't do this because I had a guy that could run a route like this. Well, there's different ways to get open. Um, there's in my experience, I, I, I thought Delaney Walker was one of the better uh, tight ends about getting open, especially the top, and he had his own flavor. And so he wasn't like a lot of other guys. You watch around the league, and he's certainly different than Kyle Pitts, how he runs routes, or how Hayden Hurst runs route. Um, or how John Smith was, or you know, these different guys I'd worked with. So, at the end of the day, what makes Calvin unique is he's his own player, and he's very crafty, really at the top. What is it that he does at the top that, that makes He knows how to set people up, and he has a different body control that other people don't have. So, again, I wish I could uh, sit there and say, hey, there's a really good drill that we ran for this. I mean, Calvin's a good football player. So, I mean, you work on, yeah, there's certain skills that you can, you know, it takes a lot of reps, and there's certain things, like I, like I always said, I, you know, I wish I could have jumped and dunked like Vince Carter, and, uh, you know, and it wouldn't matter if I had bought those, uh, remember those shoes they tried to sell people back in the 90s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do it, but, because I, uh, I wasn't dumb enough to believe that if I walked on that, that all of a sudden my vertical was going to go 15 more inches, so, um, <laughs> That's the best way I can answer that question for you. I'll take that kind of personally. All right. Well, <laughs> that was. I mean, I, that was that was my guy, Vince Carter, another Tar Heel. But I wish I could have dunked like that. Josh, what's the worst narrative out there? What's the thing that that we 
misunderstand. Oh gosh. The oh, we're all good. I mean, I'm guilty. Uh, you know, of, of, of having hot takes myself. So uh, nobody's immune to it. I, I don't know. That's a that, that's a good question. <laughs> I, <should. laughs> I have to think about that one a little bit. <laughs> I'll come back to it. I'll circle back next. Well, time. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just depends. I guess it, you know. Um, God, I mean, you talking about society or in football? <laughs> I think in the NFL, it's pro probably the week to week. I mean, you, you, you see it every year. And it can't, I mean, you need content and you need, you know, it's, it's a great thing that so many people are interested in, 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 the, in the sport and in the game and in games. And uh, it's probably the week to week, you know. A couple of things break your way or, you, you, you know, you have production here and it's like, okay, this is, this is how it's going to be now from now on. This guy's a, you know. They can't stop them here. That's, that's kind of false. I mean, you know, next week may be a completely different matchup, a different scheme, whatnot. So the week-to-week -week narratives are, are comical. Kind of on the same note, I mean, Panthers start out 3-0. They're going to be Super Bowl champs. They've lost 4-0. The sky is falling. Where do you kind of see them? They play some tight games. Um, Just like a lot of teams. They're right in the mix in the NFL. Um, like I said there's still a lot of football left to play. I know this. They're 1-0 in our division. We're 0-1. It's a big divisional game at home. Things can change. Like I said, you go through the uh, the roller coasters of it. You, you know, you lose a game. You know, people. You know, if you let it affect you, you feel like the worst team uh, in the league. And if you win a game, if you if you listen to the BS there, you, you think you really accomplished something. You're right in the middle of it. You know, they're one and zero in the division. We're all one one. And all that matters Sunday is we got to be ready to go. So I'm sure they're feeling like if they can get this one, they'll be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I think, like I said, I think he's as part of the reason, you know, we were fortunate and a lot of it, a lot of it comes. I mean, you look at the history of the draft, sometimes things fall your way, you know, and it just found the perfect storm there. And so, but the one of the things that you think and the reason I said, well, he improves is there's a lot of things that you can be a really talented player in college and you can get away with certain habits and you're just so much damn better than everybody else. And then you get here and there's so many little details and nuances and you see the him paying attention to his release, you know, at the, at the line of scrimmage. You know, you're, you're just not going to run by, but there's, there's a lot of guys that are fast in this league. And so his ability to absorb that information and to improve at, a, at, the, at the rate that he has, you'd like to, to see it going. I mean, it's not all going to be, like I said, now you, you know, talked about this right back in training camp. You hope to keep improving. It doesn't always have to be stats where he can affect the game. And what he can't buy into all of a sudden this narrative if, you know, doesn't have – a really huge statistical game because they decide some team decides to take him away and we're very successful offensively in another way, it's not a failure. And I think that people, like I said, when you ride the roller coaster week to week, you got to take the total picture, the impact he has on the game. So, uh, you know, I know that may make some fantasy football owners mad, but it is what it is. Uh, but his ability to absorb correction, to process things, and uh, hopefully he takes another step. He's a big man. Yeah. It's explosive. So <laughs> that's, if that's what I see. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a couple weeks since you asked me some online questions. So if you don't have an online question, I would be disappointed. Uh, those are the smartest guys in the field, man. Um, <laughs> they are. How is it uh, potentially pairing for like two different quarterbacks? You know, uh, Sam Darnold got benched last week, PJ Walker comes in. Like, how does that work like, just from a, a, a scheme standpoint? Well, it's every week you gotta you gotta have a plan. Like, I mean, shame on you if you don't have a plan for the backup quarterback. Uh, I gave that analogy on Monday, um, and it's a good question. So, but that's every week. You know, you're always one play away. I mean, you would you, you you've got it because they can be completely different players, and game plans can change. I use an analogy we had we had a certain game plan when I was in Washington, and we played uh, the Steelers in 2008. We had a certain rush plan for Ben Roethlisberger, who's a Hall of Fame type player. Well, he has to come out of the game, and they go to a different plan. And we had a plan for Leftwich, but it did it did alter our rush plan and, and a couple calls. And he came in and lit us up. Um, but we, it's not saying he didn't. But I'm just giving an analogy there that like most teams are aware, and you always got to have a plan, whoever whoever the backup quarterback is, because it can happen in a hurry. And you, uh, you talked about um, the training camp about kind of like 
feeding Cowfish information bits and pieces at a time instead of trying to throw a whole bunch of stuff at him. And you talk about how he's been absorbing that information and he's, you know, production is kind of starting to match up with that. Do you still kind of like have to kind of like continue to feed him stuff or, or is it a matter of, it's a matter of like, all right, let's continue to work what you've been doing, being successful at? Or how do you kind of like gauge that? Well, the same way I gauge every player on this roster and I start myself. How do I get better? I mean, if you stop, if you all of a sudden think you have one or two good games in the NFL, you've arrived, shame on you. Same thing with the, with the coach. I mean, that's hubris right there. If all of a sudden you think you got all the answers, this, this league will humble you in a heartbeat. So uh, that's why I'm so big on being objective and, and critically thinking and taking a sober-minded approach. Hey, what, what can I do uh, to build off of that? But I mean, shit. Sorry, excuse my language. Uh, I mean, if you, if you stop thinking, you stop growing, you might as well just die. I mean, that's how I look at it. So nobody's ever got all the answers. If you think that, shame on you. Scott, speaking of, uh, of, of left tackles, Jake is one of those guys that you don't talk about very much, but he seems like he's just been such a steady presence. How, how, how vital is that to have a vet who can just be there, You don't that you can just count on? Right. Yeah. And um, so that's it. And that's kind of his personality. Um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to work with Jake's dad in Tennessee, Bruce, um, one of my all-time favorite people and certainly one of my all-time favorite players uh, growing up as an offensive lineman. Um, it's ironic I got to work with him, both him and Russ Krim. They were two of my favorite players growing up. But uh, Jake's a really smart player, dependable, you know, traditional offensive lineman, the guys that you, you don't want to be talking about him because he just does his job and he's having a really good season. When, when, when guys get to a certain point, it seems like they talk a lot about their their uh, leadership, but just his, his physical performance uh, sure. on the field. I mean, he still seems to be at the top of his game. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, he's not not even towards the uh, close to his to his dad's uh, 19 years, but hell, uh, Jake's playing really solid football, and he has for a long time, and. Uh, you know, that's why I think leadership comes in all styles and size. Uh, Jake, who he is, I think, you know, he is a leader on his football team. He does it his own way. And part of it is consistency, how he shows up. He's the same guy every day. And, uh, got a lot of appreciation for Jake Matthews. Michael? I have two questions instead of one. Well, who oh, see, that's what happens when you sit next to D-Led too long. <laughs> <laughs> it's osmosis, which is maybe good, maybe not. I haven't yet. Who's your favorite offensive lineman? You just said that. You oh, see, so, so that's like telling me, you ask me, like, who's my favorite sibling? Because I, I work with both <laughs> Bruce and Russ. I mean, so, right. you know, I, I, you, can't, you can't pick a favorite. Yeah. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm trying to ask me who my favorite kid is. So, our favorite sibling. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I got a, there's a lot of linemen that I, you know, I looked up to. Uh, those are obviously two of them. Um, so, I mean, gosh, you know, talking about Orlando Pace. I mean, there's, there's so many good players, and I've never obviously – the skill and size, but there's, it's such a unique position, and those are uh, usually the most fun guys on the team to be around traditionally year in year out. Uh, that hasn't changed, probably since the history of the league. And I guess this is maybe a little bit more minute, but what's the most important trait for a backup quarterback? Yeah, um, it, it's a, it's a, again, that's a, it's playing the quarterback stuff, and that's why they're compensated. The good ones are compensated the way they are. Um, it's that. You don't get a ton of reps during the week. You know, it's not college football where you've got a, you know, 110 guys go out there and practice and you could, you know, do a bunch of split field work and, and get them all their reps. So it's limited reps and there's a, it's kind of two phase, you know, those guys take a lot of your, your carded reps, which are going to be the other team's offense. And then they got to study and they got to, they got to work as hard as a starter to be mentally ready to go. Cause you really are, you know, one play away. Um, so it's a mental discipline to be able to get your work in especially how you're studying the plan, be able to operate the other team's show team. Uh, not many teams carrying three if they do, you know, but there's just a lot that goes into it. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very important job. Mike Thomas, I'm back. Hey, Coach, um, as you prepare for the Panthers this week, what are some of the challenges that you see from offense and, from their offense and their defense? Really, all three phases. Um, they got a really good front. They got two edge guys that can, that can really get after the quarterback. Um, and then interior. You know, Brown and Jones in there. Uh, I don't know, Daquan well. He's a powerful player inside. They're probably going to get Shaq Thompson back. Carter, they're very active defense. It's a very physical defense. They play with a lot of speed. And, 
you know, they, they played multiple guys on the, on the back end. They've obviously made the trades. Everybody's given a lot of attention to Henderson. I'm sure we'll see Gilmore. Uh, they, they're, they're a really good, fast, physical football team. And offensively, uh, you know, they, they played a lot of different linemen like most teams in this league. You gotta, you gotta, you're dealing with something this time of year. Uh, the, a quarterback, he can make plays. He can hurt you. He's tough in the pocket. He can extend plays. He's got a live arm. Receivers are big, you know, more Anderson. So we got to work it out really, you know, they're two tight ends, Thomas, Tremble. They're doing a really good job for him. And then so it, 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 they present problems everywhere. They got a good team. I like their special teams. Uh, they've already blocked a punt, blocked a punt versus Minnesota. Uh, so it's a challenge. They do some unique things. I think they, they have a really good scheme, especially teams wise. And like I said, Matt Rule is a hell of a coach. These guys will be ready to play. And you can see how they're building that thing. And, and they're, they got good players. Eli? Uh, yeah, Coach, was um, last week at running back, was that a switch or a matchup situation where Patterson? Uh, got most of the carries. Well, one, one a ton of call it runs. It's kind of the way the game went. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how that happened. Uh, some of it's by personnel packages, some of it's planned, and then a lot of some of it's the flow of the game. So it's going to change week to week. Except we don't put a fixed number on there. There's different ways to move the football and to be smart about it. So, uh, you know, like I said, we'd love to, love to be, if you're normally, if you're in the 30 plus carries, you're probably winning. Um, like I said, there's obviously other ways to win, but that's kind of what it came down to. There's nothing, not, there's nothing that I, I feel very confident both those guys and, and Wayne Gallman running the football for us. But that's just kind of the way the game went. And how do y'all uh, prepare for if Stephen Gilmore is going to play or not? I know they, they're saying it's close, but they haven't played yet. Um, same way you got to prepare every week. Guys coming back off injury, no different than Shaq Thompson. You know, he, Gilmore's a hell of a player. He's out there. Just another good player they got they added to that defense you gotta account for. Um, you know, familiar with him. They went against him in uh, eighteen and nineteen. Uh, when, when he's going, he's as good as there is at corner. So he's healthy, I'm sure they'll put him out there. Uh, everybody loves a cornerback who's gonna stick his head in and make tackles. But is there anything AJ can do different? He's so valuable in coverage when he's making those tackles to keep himself in games so he's knocked himself out of a couple here. He hasn't done that. So um, AJ's a good player. I, I think that's that's a misconception. So there's different issues you're de dealing with. That I wouldn't take it on the surface. I'm not the medical expert, but uh, with all our guys, we teach safe tackling. Uh, so unless you're going to tell the guy just to bail and play some kind of two invert and play him in a, in a deep half or a deep third, what you want to say, and tell him get out of the mix, they're gonna, every player on defense is going to have to come up and tackle. And that's not just him. That's any any position there. So we teach safe tackling. That's a big emphasis in football from, from the NFL on down. Um, like I said, I, there's nothing that he's doing that's reckless. So I, I, that, that's not true. He hasn't been knocked out of games. Uh, but uh, there are different issues. And that happens with a lot of different players. Charles? Coach, what are some of the, the – uh... Defense has to deal with like the twelve personnel. Like, what are some of the um, problems that twelve personnel presents for like folks in defense? Depends on what twelve personnel you put on there. Uh, you know, it's the same thing I used to think about when people were on the analytic wave of the uh, three-point shooting in the NBA. Um, you put like Curry, and you got Draymond Green, you got Kevin Durant, and you got Klay Thompson firing threes. Looks pretty damn good. And if I was out there, and Bassey were out there, probably wouldn't look the same. And we can shoot a high volume of threes. Same thing we get with the tight ends. Depends what tight end you put out there. What, what are their skill set? So if you, if you put two guys that are that are more run blockers, you know, it's just a different kind of matchup. You know, so it just depends on the player. Um, like I said, you're getting a lot of hybrid defender defenders and offensive players. And uh, if you got guys that can play multiple roles and actually legitimately you can run behind, okay, that makes you a little more uh, to me unpredictable offensively. So it just depends on the player. And you, you can line them up everywhere if they can legitimately play receiver. Josh, you were talking about Gilmore. Do you believe in the concept of a shutdown corner? Are, are there guys that you have said to yourself as a play caller, I'm just not going there? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some guys when they're rolling and it depends on the scheme. Uh, you know, I go back to when I was looking at a lot of the, the, the Jets defense, you know, late 2000s, early, I mean, Darrell Reeves was, was 
God mighty, he was he was good. But the schematically how they did it and they matched him up man to man, it, a lot of times that's it's a little bit of a it depends on the scheme. Uh, yeah, there's certain corners that you, yeah if they're rolling, you try to stay away from them. But if, if they're asking play man, sometimes it's zone. Like you look at some of these stats, like hey this guy had been. There's so much nuance in football. Put it that way. If you're going man to man one on one matchup, that's the best way to evaluate. Can this guy cover man to man? Truly take somebody away. Sometimes the coverage just dictates that thing. Whether the guy's in weak corner or not, they they call cover two and they cloud over there and they got an outside route. Probably converse. Paul's not going over anyways, so they can hype up some Instagram stats. Said, oh yeah, he's been. Ta- I mean, whatever. You know, you know, hasn't been whatever. It's hard. It's hard. And I'm not. And then when I phrase that, there's so many variables that go into it. The best way to probably look at it is if he's man to man and seeing what he does. Depends on what you're looking for. It depends on the scheme. So that, that's probably the best way I can put it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of good corners in this league. Uh, you're going to have a problem every week. There's going to be good players out there. I got a lot of respect for those guys. It's a tough position to play, and you got to have the right mindset to play it because when you get beat, everybody knows about it. Um, no different than the long snapper. So or something you know bad happens, everybody in the stadium is going to know. And so you got to have the right mindset, and there's a lot of good corners in this league. Yeah, I'm waiting for Terry to uh, bring him in here. <laughs> so we're working on that. We're working on that right now. Thank you.